Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna take a look at TP-Link Amata versus Ubiquiti Unify. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon storefront and I'll put the link in the description below. The first thing we'll take a look at is some of the hardware and the comparison between it. And then we'll get into the Amada controller and the Unify controller and we'll create some networks and see how similar they are. I tried my best to find models that match each brand. So for the first access point, we're gonna be looking at the TP-Link EAP265 HD. On the five gigahertz, this does up to 1300 megabits per second. On the 2.4 gigahertz, it does up to 450 megabits per second. It has two one gigabit interfaces and one is a pass-through interface. And to power this access point, we're gonna be using 802.3AF or AT PoE, and it comes in at a price point of $129 MSRP. The unified comparison to this access point would be the UAP AC Pro, and this does up to 1300 megabits per second as well on the five gigahertz and 450 on the 2.4 gigahertz. It also has two one gigabit interfaces, one which is pass-through. It's powered by 802.3 AF or AT, and it's $149 MSRP. Now we're gonna take a look at some of the Wi-Fi 6 options. For TP-Link, we're gonna be looking at the EAP660 HD. On the five gigahertz band, this does up to 2,402 megabits per second. On the 2.4, it does up to 1,148 megabits per second. It is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet interface and it's powered by 802.3 AT and the price point is $199 MSRP. The Unify equivalent would be the Unify 6 LR. On the five gigahertz band, we have up to 2.4 gigabits per second and on the 2.4 gigahertz band, we have up to 600 megabits per second. This access point only has a one gigabit ethernet interface. It's powered by 802.3 AT and it comes in at $179 MSRP. Both Unify and TP-Link have a wide variety of access points and you can check it out on their websites. The next piece of hardware we're gonna look at by TP-Link is the TLSG2428P. This is a 28 port switch and 24 of the ports are PoE. The PoE budget is 250 watts and we're using 802.3 AT or AF and it has four gigabit SFP connections on the right-hand side of the switch. This switch retails for $399 MSRP, and the equivalent Unify switch to that would be the Unify switch US24-250 watt. This is a generation one switch, but it is the closest thing to the TP-Link switch. So this gives us 24 ports of PoE with the 250 watt limit, and it provides 802.3 AF and AT PoE+. On the right-hand side, we have two one gigabit SFPs. As for routers, right now TP-Link only has two, the TLR65, which is the one that I use, and the TLER7206. The TLR605 is a multi-WAN VPN router. I haven't set it up with multiple WAN connections, but I am planning on doing that in another video. For Unify, we have the base UDM, we have the UDM Pro, and then we have our USG series of firewalls and routers. Now that we've looked at some of the hardware, let's go ahead and get into the software controllers. Now I have both of my controllers up. On the left-hand side, we have TP-Link Amata, and on the right-hand side, we have Ubiquiti Unify. As you can tell, they look fairly similar to one another. On the TP-Link, we could see the gateways being used at 1%. We could see that we have one switch, one access point, and five clients. On the Unify side, it pretty much looks the same. We could see our internet capacity. We could see the UDM Pro utilization, how many switches are there, how many access points, and how many Wi-Fi clients. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how the settings look. So we'll click on the settings wheel of our TP-Link Amata. And here on the left-hand side, we can see site wired networks, wireless networks, network security, transmission, VPN, profiles, authentication, and services. Under Unify, we could see our site wireless networks, networks, routing and firewall, threat management, DPI, guest control, profile services, and user groups. Now let's go ahead and create a network. So on TP-Link Amata, we're gonna click wired networks, and we're gonna to wanna to select LANs, and then we'll press create new LAN. And over on Ubiquiti, we're gonna to go to networks, 
and then we're gonna create new network. I'm gonna call this network TP link and we're gonna specify it's an interface and it's gonna go over the LAN port, which is the trunk port connecting to my TP link router. And then we'll give it a VLAN ID of 112. We'll give it a gateway and subnet of 192.168.112.1 and slash 24. And then we'll update the DHCP range. And now on Unify, we'll call it Unify. We'll give it a VLAN ID of 112 as well. And we'll create it 192.168.112.1 slash 24. And we'll update the DHCP range. And then on TP link, we'll press save. And then on our Unify, we'll press save as well. So you can see how similar these two controllers are. Now let's create wireless networks. So if I click wireless networks in TP-Link and wireless networks in Unify, first we'll go ahead and we'll create the new wireless network in our TP-Link Amata, and we'll call this TP-Link. We'll enable both bands. Guest we're not gonna have enabled and our passwords will be test1234. And then we'll go down to advanced settings and this is where we're gonna set the VLAN ID of 112. Now in Unify, let's create new wireless network. Here I'll call this one Unify. We're gonna use WPA personal of test one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna select our network, which is the VLAN in Unify. Here it's gonna be Unify and then we'll press save. And then on TP link, we'll press apply. So where it gets a little bit different is in our network security. So I'm gonna full screen the TP link and then we'll look at the network security. Here we can make rules at the gateway, the switch, or the EAP level. We look at Unify, we have our WAN, LAN, and we have our guest to specify both IPv6 and IPv4. Attack defense under TP-Link is somewhat like the threat management in Unify, but it's very limited. Another thing with TP-Link, we can't do multi-WAN IPs. These should be added by default to any router or firewall as it's very basic and has been done for years. Now let's take a look at VPN. So if I click on VPN on our TP-Link, we could create new VPN policy. Under the VPN policy, we could have a site-to-site -site VPN, we could have a client-to-site -site VPN, we could have auto IPsec if we have multiple routers in the same controller on different sites, and we could have manual IPsec. If we click client-to-site VPN, we could have a VPN server at L2TP, we have PPTP, IPsec, or OpenVPN. And we could also create this as a VPN client. So we could have an OpenVPN client, PPTP, or an L2TP. Within Unify, we really only have two options. We have our site-to-site -site VPNs or we have our remote user L2TP VPN. So the TP-Link has more options with VPNs. Another thing TP-Link does not have is its own Radius server built-in. Unify does have a Radius server built-in. If you wanted to use Radius on TP-Link, you would have to use a different Radius server. If you guys have a question about this video or would like to see something else in a different comparison video, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.